Hi folks, welcome back to the Horde. So, there we are, look at that nice green lights. Um, some of you folks may have seen a, a couple of exchanges between Bill Staten and I. And when it comes to the electrical systems on these things, and this is the Trailer Park TRX 300, EX. I was thinking that they were a lot like the ones on the 250 ES or even the um, which is a more sophisticated version of the um, 200 S. So anyway after Bill's comments I spent a little bit more time on it and I went and I got a little better meter here just to make sure I wasn't screwing anything up. So I checked the wires once again. You guys remember blue and white is the pulser, green is ground. Yellow, in the case of this plug, would power the stator, would power the um, ignition system, but what it does is it powers the ignition system for this CDI over here. And right then, if you look, there's a second CDI right there, right? And you wonder how is all this working? Well, the way it's working is this CDI, the one if you're sitting on the bike on the right hand side, appears to power the reverse which means there's a built-in rev limiter and all that other kind of stuff. Though it's bigger. Normally the bigger ones are, um, are DC, but this has a yellow wire for power going into it. Anyway, let's go with one of these two. Um, powers reverse and it's got the rev limiter in it. And the other one uh, has no or less of a rev limiter in it and it's to go forward with. It's to power yourself as you're going forward. So anyway, after what I had been hoping to do is just put a pit bike ignition on this thing and use the reverse stator to make it go. We use this yellow to power the pit bike. The pit bike ignitions, most of them are AC. So I figured I'd just smash it on here and be ripping about. Anyway, I did put it on here and I got no spark. So the next thing I did is I probed between this green wire and the yellow wire and the yellow wire and ground and found an open circuit and I said, oh, I got a trashed stator. Then what I did is I probed between the green wire and all the wires that uh, come off the AC stator, the one for running the voltage regulator and charging the battery, and I found them to be open to ground also. And that led me to the assumption, wow, all the stators are open to ground, that's, that's weird, and that's where the last video ended. After the discussions with Bill, you guys could see the, uh, the um, chat going back and forth, he tells me that these do not go to ground, the wires coming out of the AC, for the AC for powering, for charging the battery the AC lines going into the regulator so to speak they are open to ground and they only have resistance between each other so I said hmm let me think back to school if you have three phase with only resistance to each other that's known as a delta configuration for AC power if you have um, coils, 
three, two, three, four. Um, and they all hook to ground. They all have a common line to ground that's known as a, a Y connection or a Y configuration for AC. And so I thought about it, and it actually makes sense. This delta configuration here, the good thing about it is when you put a load on it, you're sharing it, especially a hard load, you're sharing it against two coils, where if you have kind of a delta configuration, um, right, as this thing is pulsing, it's got no help anywhere else. This is pulsing and that's pulsing, right? So um, you actually, I guess, share the load a little better with a delta connection. You also save a wire, right? You only have three wires here. You got four wires there. So anyway, so that's the delta configuration. That's considered a Y configuration. And you can see this one looks like a Y. That one looks like a delta, right, a, a triangle. So given that, it does appear as if the AC that would run reverse on this bike is opened. Okay, so it's opened. Um, but it looks like I get 1.4 ohms between each one of the um, coils to each other or to all its brothers and so forth, each coil to its brothers. Um, so it appears as if this thing will charge a battery, which means I can put a DC ignition into it. So, um, and what I have, and Bill, Bill put me onto these too. I think I have it up here, yeah. These are, and you guys could see I already kind of messed with the wiring harness to hack it up. But the, you know, I already kind of set, set this thing up with a, with a wire harness. Anyway, this box is, um, is for DC ignition. And it's, um, these are more high performance. So if I use this box rather than the, um, the box that's on there, and you see it, it came with the matching coil and the whole bit. Uh, that's kind of the way I like to buy them, where you get the box with its matching coil. Not that I'm all worried about the colors. Uh, that's not what I mean by matching. What I mean by matching is... The people that are, that sold me the box say, by selling you this the coil with it, that that's probably, when you're buying crap from China, there's no such thing as definitely, but probably that that coil will, will match up the best. The impedance of that coil hopefully agrees the most with this box here. So what I'm going to do with the, um, with the, uh, um, TRX 300EX is I'm going with the DC ignition system and I'm going to go with this high performance model. I'm going to smash um, this on there and um, it's just kind of hanging out here and uh, quite honestly it's um, it, it's not really easy to use this as a test ignition I mean, I guess I can put it in a box, but if I'm running it, you know, it might get hot, and I don't really want it overheating, right? It's got, the whole thing is basically aluminum heat sink. So I, I, I much rather like the idea that I'll, I'll just set this up on the 300EX and let it, let it cool itself. I guess this is basically what, um, what Bill does for his, his, um, a lot of the bikes he's he's been building he's um with the with the chat if you guys have followed us chatting back and forth he's also about to build himself a um a separate uh charging circuit he's going to basically make his own alternator out of a um 
three um, three hundred um, ex um, stator AC, AC stator for the for charging batteries. He's basically going to make his own his all, own alternator, which is cool. Um, the other thing you could do is the China stuff is cheaper. Once again, not nearly as robust, but you could come up with a flywheel and a stator for the uh, for the China stuff. Uh, fairly fairly reasonable, downright cheap. As a matter of, I mean, you could buy. Sometimes you can pick up these China bikes um, more or less for free. You just run an ad on Craigslist. Wanted China bikes. Uh, if complete, pay you fifty bucks each. You probably get more of them than you know what to do with. But um, once you get them home, <laughs> uh, I mean, if you're a kid, wonderful thing to experiment with. But as an adult, um, I know the way I'm built, I have a tendency to end up on my ass if I ride them. So uh, for, for those of us who are uh, over 110 pounds and, uh, and a little heavier from the waist up than the waist down, uh, do, do, do beware, you can find yourself on your ass. So, there we are. That, that was my big revelation today. And I hope that this, um, helps some of you guys if, if you're building an ignition system. Once I put the whole ignition system together, these fans are from another project, but once I put the whole ignition system together, um, I think whoop, that she had a different one. <clears throat> anyway, once I smash the whole ignition system together, if you guys are interested, I could uh, I can show show you it. I mean, just just quickly. Um, that's ground. This yellow wire. That yellow wire and ground would go to the coil, and the red wire is probably plus 12 volts, and that goes to ground also. And this blue wire is where you hook up the pulser, um, and once again, if there's two wires on the pulser, the ground wire to ground and the blue and white to there and that's all you need um, I, theoretically this black wire here is probably the off if you want to turn it off I would turn it off by turning the power off to the uh, to the um, CDI right um, just knock the power down and uh, it'll shut down um, so very very easy to hook up all right folks i uh i hope if anybody out there has a 300 ex that you need to get through the wiring system on and you uh you want to get her fired up i hope this helps what i guess what i'm thinking about is um what what exactly I want to do with the ignition system? If I um, I I think I think what I want to do is I want to get this running, and I don't want to put a lot of money into it, um, because eventually I would like to get a frame that has numbers and paperwork on it, like this puppy here, right? So that um, if I decide to move it out. To Pennsylvania wherever I, I can do that and not be asked all kinds of uh, questions right um, I'd like you know I'd like the possibility of being able to register it but um, nothing nothing um, I, I, I don't want it to be an attention getter so um, my eyes are open for a um, a frame and quite honestly I wouldn't mind getting a frame with a motor on it because that's always always the best the best gig you end up with all kinds of spare parts the uh, the the short circuit in my thought process though right now is I picked up a whole bike that I could get running for 350 bucks 
and it looks like a rolling frame with bad tires folks want more than 350 bucks for so um it might be a little while before I find the deal that I'm after. If I can't get the deal that I'm after, I, I normally just wait. And the reason why I wait is because I have plenty of other crap to play with, organize, put away, sort through, and uh, get my act together. Um, folks, on fall cleanup, um, make sure you get your mouse traps out. So far, I've whacked four mice down in the basement. And the uh, two traps I keep up here, one over there and one over here, have already, uh, over the last couple of days, whacked a couple of mice. So the mice are coming in. Um, they don't like to winter outside as much as we don't like to winter outside. So they want to come into your house and get into your stuff. So, um, Or if you, uh, you have sheds and all, they want to get into your sheds. So um, get get your get your stuff put away properly and get your mouse traps or your your bucket with water in it and uh, you, you know peanut butter um, wire across the top peanut butter on a can such that when the mouse leans over on the can it slips and falls in musty one has a good good mouse trap um, that that he uh, he gets them with so um, the uh, only bad thing about that kind of mousetrap is you do have to check it once in a while or you could go out to your shed and find uh, mice soup brewing away out there and I imagine the smell would be enough to uh, I don't know my friends used to say that smell is so bad it's bad enough to choke a maggot so um, I imagine if it's been sitting out there for a little while, especially if it warms up, it could be pretty stinky. And if it's an enclosed shed, it's not like the smell is dissipating. It's staying right in that closed shed, getting really, really nasty. So that's that's the um, the uh, only whatever traps you put in a shed, you gotta you gotta make sure you check them so you don't have a nasty smell in shed. Um, some people say mothballs really. Uh, Really do a good job chasing away mice. Um, kind of hard on the moths, but um, you know, I've I've had some success with mothballs with one of the sheds while I was building it. I brought a box in and then knocked the box over, and they were all over the place. And I didn't bother picking them up. And the mice seemed to avoid that shed until the mothballs all evaporated, sublimated, whatever you want to call it. Um, so you guys could try that too if wherever you put them you don't mind the smell too bad you don't want to smell like uh you know somebody's great grandmother who stored all her wood wool stuff in mothballs all right folks i want to thank you all for watching and commenting and subscribing remember to keep your feet down keep your head up and please please get out there and enjoy all your days bye now folks